O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The first psalm is Psalm 121, beginning on page 497. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. O whence cometh my help? My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defense upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee day, neither the time by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, from this time forth forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second psalm is Psalm 122, beginning on page 498. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go unto the house of the Lord. Behold, our feet now stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city. It is at unity in itself. Whither the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there were set the thrones for judgment, even the thrones of the house of David. O pray for the peace of Jerusalem, May they prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and plenteousness within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will wish thee prosperity. Yea, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do thee good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The third psalm is Psalm 123, beginning on page 498. <clears throat> Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, even as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, even so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are utterly despised. Our soul is filled with the scornful reproof of the wealthy, and with the despitefulness of the proud. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the first apocryphal book of Maccabees the second chapter, beginning at the 49th verse. Now the days drew near for Mattathias to die, and he said to his sons, Arrogance and scorn have now become strong. It is a time of ruin and furious anger. Now, my children, show zeal for the law, and give your lives for the covenant of our ancestors. Remember the deeds of the ancestors which they did in their generations, and you will receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful and tested, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness? Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandments and became lord of Egypt. Phineas, our ancestor, because he was deeply zealous, received the covenant of everlasting priesthood. Joshua, because he fulfilled the command, became a judge in Israel. Caleb, because he testified in the assembly, received an inheritance in the land. David, because he was merciful, inherited the throne of the kingdom forever. Elijah, because of great zeal for the law, was taken up into heaven. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mizael believed and were saved from the flame. Daniel, because of his innocence, was delivered from the mouth of the lions. And so observe from generation to generation that none of those who put their trust in him will lack strength. Do not fear the words of sinners, for their splendor will turn into dung and worms. 
Today they will be exalted, but tomorrow they will not be found, because they will have returned to the dust, and their plans will have perished. My children, be courageous and grow strong in the law, for by it you will gain honor. Here is your brother, Simeon, who I knew is wise in counsel. Always listen to him. He shall be your father. Judas Maccabeus has been a mighty warrior from his youth. He shall command the army for you and fight the battle against the peoples. You shall rally around you all who observe the law and avenge the wrong done to your people. Pay back the Gentiles in full and obey the commands of the law. Then he blessed them and was gathered to his ancestors. Here endeth the first lesson. Mattathias, the leader of the faithful Jewish resistance to foreign and pagan religious influences, nears death and appoints his son, Judas Maccabeus, to be his military successor. Before dying, Mattathias addresses his five sons and encourages them to be like their ancestors in Judaism by remaining loyal and faithful to the Jewish religion. A comparable list of names of Judaism's heroic ancestors can be found in Hebrews chapter 11. May we as true Christians read these lists with eyes of faith and be inspired by the courageous examples of our faithful ancestors. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the second epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in his ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. 
for this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Here endeth the second lesson. Is the cause of God to be forwarded by earthly means, by lies and half-truths, by deceit and by scheming? No, it certainly is not. Though the ways of the world seem at times more efficient for accomplishing a given task, such is not God's way, or the way of all true Christians. St. Paul grew the church not through disgraceful, underhanded, and cunning means, but by stating the word of God and the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, plainly, openly, and fully. Indeed, God's holy word has the power in itself to accomplish appointed tasks. We need not scheme or plot in order to make it effective. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according, according to, to thy, thy word. For mine eyes have, have seen thy salvation, which thou, thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light in the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. <clears throat> o Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give, O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make lean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the Church, in continual godliness that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve thee in good works. To the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful Father, who hast been pleased to take unto thyself our brethren departed, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that, having served thee faithfully in this world, we may, with all faithful Christian souls, be joined hereafter to the company of thy blessed saints in glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee in the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.